Hi everybody. Today I wanted to show you a project that I've been working on for a while now. So I fly unmanned aerial systems fairly frequently and was getting frustrated with the size and complexity of my setup. Every time I wanted to go fly I would have to bring a laptop, transmitters, batteries, receivers, and tons of other gear out to the field. And not to mention that the aircraft is always very large and cumbersome and I was always nervous of breaking something on my way to the field. And then when I got to the field, it would take me upwards of 30 minutes to get everything set up. So in short, the overhead was getting to be too much. So I decided to build a uh, compact mobile system that would reduce the complexity involved with my UAS flight operations. So today I wanted to show you my ground control station here that I've enclosed into a Pelican case. So this here is just a Pelican 1605 case. Um, and inside of it, let me open it up. You see what I've done is I've turned it into a mobile ground control station. So I actually need this one up here because you're going to see it's a little bit top heavy, unfortunately. Well, let me just secure this. So let's go ahead and pop this off the tripod and we can take a look. Um, why don't I unpack some of these and then we'll take a look at some more of the components. So you'll see I've got the actual aircraft in here. Here's a horizontal stabilizer. Here's the two wings. And then I've got the fuselage and empennage as well as the uh, transmitter. So let's go ahead and like I said, I'll take everything out and get it all set up and then we'll come back and take a look at the overall now system. Got everything unpacked, why don't we take a closer look at each one of the components in turn. So why don't we start off with the aircraft. So I'm flying a Finwing Sabre that is running a Pixhawk with a customized version of Arduplane that I modified and compiled and loaded on board. Um, the most interesting thing about this aircraft is, uh, as you saw earlier, it's actually able to break down pretty compactly. It's got a series of really nice, ingenious latches here along the wing here that's going to allow the entire wing to pop off. And similarly, the empennage and the horizontal stabilizer break off and can be transported quite easily inside the Pelican case. Um, I'm using a Turnigy TGY I-10 uh, for the primary command and control link here. And the most interesting thing is, like I said, and what took the most amount of work here was getting this customized ground control station all set up. So just to start off here, you'll see that my uh, main piece of electronics here is a uh, Microsoft Surface Pro 2 that's running Windows 10 and a, uh, again, customized version of Mission Planner here as my ground control station software. This is actually also hooked up to a 13 inch field monitor that has VGA, HDMI, RCA inputs. Um, I'm primarily using it for the VGA so this is actually a second monitor for the service to get a little bit more real estate. Uh, you'll notice here that I've also got a uh, Lumineer FPV monitor here, which is hooked into this Immersion RC Duo 5800 um, 5.8 gigahertz FPV receiver. I've also got a Hobby King H10 uh, power analyzer, so this will allow me to see how much uh, current the entire GCS is drawing from the battery. The battery I've got actually is a 20,000 milliamp hour 3 cell 12 volt battery that's hidden behind this surface here to power the entire system on battery power. Uh, you'll see the way that works here is the battery is hooked up into this 300 watt uh, modified sine wave inverter. So that will convert my 12 volts to whatever 120 volt AC that the surface or the monitor or any of these other components need here. I also tap off 12 volts DC for things like the uh, FPV uh, 5.8 gigahertz receiver. Um, I also have installed a DVR here. So the DVR is going to allow me to record the FPV video in case I need it for any particular reason couple other minor things to note here. I've got a uh, remote control here so I can control the monitor uh, or the 13 inch field monitor up here and as well as I've got another remote control here so I can control the uh, FPV monitor. 
Um, all of that is actually recessed into the lid of the Pelican case here. So one of the things that I wanted to do was I really wanted to ensure that I didn't uh, modify the exterior of the Pelican case. I wanted it to maintain its waterproof functionality. So you'll see I've mounted all of these components onto this three quarter inch um, piece of plywood. Oh, and maybe while we're sticking around here, you'll notice here I've got a uh, HDMI input so I can have an ex uh, another HDMI source feed into here, which would then show up here on the field monitor. In addition here, I've got up to a uh, six cell voltage checking capability. So if I wanted to check voltage on say one of these spare batteries or something like that, I've got a four cell here, I can plug it in right here and then check voltages and whatnot down here on the power analyzer so that's kind of a nice feature but anyway getting back to it what i've got here is like i said i've mounted all of these components into this uh three quarter inch plywood here and then to get the plywood to stay onto the lid was kind of a little bit of a trick here so you'll notice what i did here is down low um i've actually lined the bottom of uh this side and this vertical side here with Velcro, and I put similarly adhesive Velcro onto the inside of the lid. So that sticks fairly well. And then what I do on the other two sides here, on the opposing edges up here on the top, and as well over here on the side, it's a little harder to see here, but I've got these furniture levelers here. They're basically just these screws that can extend or retract. So I basically just have them extend and push on this entire lid and it puts the entire system here in compression here so this entire uh lid this piece of plywood is in compression here in the lid so it allows us to keep that lid stuck in place nice and firm um in addition here you'll also notice here that on my surface i've got it hooked up to a usb hub the usb hub has got a couple of things plugged in so i've got my normal um, 915 megahertz data telemetry link between the aircraft and the ground control station. That's one item. And then also I've got hooked up to a full mouse and keyboard because I don't know about you, but I can't deal with touch pads out there in the field. So I like to have a full setup so that I can utilize that when, to run the ground control station. So in a nutshell, that's my mobile ground control station setup. It's fully enclosed, runs on a battery, although it does have the option to run on shore power. What I can do is if I actually roll up to a location that actually has um, shore power here, I can just pull this extension cord and instead of having 120 volt AC being generated by the inverter here, I'll just have that being generated by uh, whatever shore power source, a generator or whatever I've got here on station. So uh, theoretically, that's my setup. Why don't I go ahead and pack everything up and I'll show you one more interesting fu uh, feature of this before we head out to the field. And uh, like I said, I want to show you one other thing that's nice about having this UAS and ground control station all enclosed in a case is that you can actually mount it to a backpack fairly easily. So I've got this traveling cargo backpack. And as you can see, this allows me to strap on the entire UAS system onto a backpack. And now I can take it hiking. So it's not the lightest thing in the world. The GCS Pelican case combo is about 32 and a half pounds and the backpack's another five and a half pounds. So this whole setup's about 38 pounds that you need to lug around, but it's not that bad. And I think it's a small price to pay for having a nice mobile compact UAS system that can be set up and deployed pretty much anywhere. So again, here's my entire system enclosed in a pelican cake.